All right, we're going to do a little bit of Ryzen 7 versus Ryzen 9 and just figure out, is it worth it to get a Ryzen 9? Are they that much faster? Is the Ryzen 7 good enough? Which one do you need for your needs? Why is the price so stupid low on this right now? I just opened up the page and I was like, what is going on? We have two different GMK Tech Nuckbox M7. We have the M7 and then the M7 Pro. So the M7 has a Ryzen 7 Pro and the M7 Pro has a Ryzen 9 Pro. It's confusing because the Ryzen parts are both called Pro, but only one of the NUC boxes is called Pro, and that's the Ryzen 9. <laughs> Why the hell did it zoom in? Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft, and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code, click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS. 25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now, when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View, Keys, and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Before I get to the testing, I'm gonna talk about these two GMK Tech products. They're virtually identical other than the CPU. I mean, they're it's the same thing, really, just different CPU. So I wanna talk about that and then talk about the specs and then we'll go through all the benchmarks. If you're just curious about one thing, the benchmarks or whatever, I'll put some links down in the description and you can just click around in the video. I don't care, do whatever you want. It's your own life. Eat a bowl of cereal at the same time, do it. They both come in these really cool cases. I actually like the look a lot, but they've got this industrial look on the outside, very sleek. And then on top, we have a tinted piece of plexiglass that pops off by applying firm pressure and turning clockwise. Then you can snap it back on by doing the opposite. I thought that was pretty cool, but they do really pick up smudges and fingerprints a lot. So be sure to keep it clean. I tried to clean it with a paper towel and that was not a good idea. You're gonna need a microfiber cloth to keep this thing clean. The Ryzen 7 Pro is the 6850H. One of the things that's really awesome about both of these units is they have Oculink. Oculink is a pure PCI Express connection. It's not Thunderbolt, it's not USB 4. It's one step beyond even Thunderbolt because it literally just lets you plug straight into the bus. Just the same as like putting a card into a PCI Express slot. Like no interface in between, nothing. So Oculink is really cool and they both have that right on the front. That'll give you some raw speed if you wanted to plug up a graphics card dock or something on the side and just you know, play games or do whatever. The Ryzen 6850H has eight cores, 16 threads, 54 watt TDP, and they have some turbo modes and stuff you can turn on if you wanna push it farther. I'm doing my tests with the turbo modes on, because it's fun. 16 megabytes of L3 cache on that. It's a six nanometer part. Okay, both of these parts have eight cores, 16 threads, 16 megabytes of L3 cache. They both have that. The difference? Well, the Ryzen 7 runs at 3.2 gigahertz and it'll turbo up to 4.7. Whereas the Ryzen 9 runs at 3.3 gigahertz and it'll turbo up to 4.9. So the turbo is a couple hundred megahertz faster. That's the main difference here between both of these systems. Just a little extra turbo, but you still get the same number of threads, the same number of of course, very similar. Not, the Ryzen 9 is just a little bit more frequent. Is that what you call it when it has extra frequency? It's frequent? Yeah. They also both have the AMD Radeon 680M. It's clocked at 2200 megahertz on the Ryzen 7, 2400 megahertz on the Ryzen 9. So again, a little bit of extra frequency right there. These both have DDR5, 4800 megahertz, and I have different amounts in each. So the Ryzen 7, I've got a 512 gigabyte M.2 and 16 gigabytes of the DDR5 at 4800 megahertz. The Ryzen 9 has a one terabyte drive, but you can get them configured in multiple different ways. And that one also has 32 gigabytes of the DDR5 memory. The NVMe on this is PCI Express 3. So it's not the bleeding edge form stuff, it's PCI Express 3. As far as the connectivity goes, you got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. We also have two 2.5 gigabit NICs on both of these units. They both come with Windows 11 Pro as well. Uh, they all have the same array of ports because it's pretty much the same case right there. And you can see the front, we've got Oculink, we've got USB 4, 40 gigabits per second on that. We got a couple of USB right there. Those are five gigabits per second, USB 3.0. Then we have our combo headphone microphone port and a power button. On the back, more USB display port, HDMI. We have those two NICs, 
and then we also have another USB 4. Let's talk about our displays on this. So we got DisplayPort 2.0, that'll support 4K at 60 hertz, HDMI 2.1, 8K at 60 hertz. Then we have both of those Type-C, those are both USB 4, and you can run four monitors at the same time. The USB 4 will also do power delivery. So if you wanna plug up an external monitor that just you know plug it in, well, then you're gonna be able to get power delivery through this device, through the USB 4, and you'll just be able to plug it in with one cable and it'll have DisplayPort and it'll be powered on, no need to plug it into the wall. All right, let's take a peek under the hood and then we'll get down to those benchmarks. So in order to get under the hood, you just turn and pull it off. It took me a second to like get it off the first time because I didn't know what to do and it doesn't say anything in the Oh, I didn't see anything in the manual. I don't know. We have an impeller on the top and a blower on the bottom. On the top there, you can see once we remove the fan, we have our M.2 installed. And then there's our two sticks of RAM. And there's an extra slot. Take a look right in there in the middle. And notice that it is not right beside the other M.2. So they're spaced out a little bit. And I think that's good for heat dissipation. But we'll see how it is when we do our tests. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks and see what happens. I wanted to see what games we could play on here, and Frostpunk 2 just came out. I enjoyed the first one. It's brutal. I'm getting my ass kicked right now just starting up. So Frostpunk, if you haven't played it, um, first off, it does work on this on the low setting. It's, the graphics are kind of crazy. But this is a city building game and probably the most brutal city building game. So in 1880 something, we entered another ice age and just, it was, it's it's bad. The British created a few colonies and that's um, that's all I'm gonna say. You, you come in here and you're trying to maintain a colony. I've got 28 weeks left before a whiteout, you know, occurs. And that's what I'm doing here in the first part of the game. I haven't played it very long, but I wanted to bring you this. You'll start to meet some of your NPCs and hear their stories as you struggle to survive in the frozen wasteland. Anyway, now that you know that Frostpunk 2 is out, uh, this is what it looks like on the lowest setting. This we're, we're playing on the lowest setting right now. You know, even though we're just getting around 30 FPS, since it's a strategy game, it does feel just fine because it's not running at like 10 or 15 FPS. So uh, yeah, I'm going to gather more resources. So anyway, Frostpunk 2 is out. You can check out the link in the description. Thanks to them for sending it over so I could uh, take a look. And I am actually really impressed with how good this looks on the lowest setting. So if you've got a beefy system and want to try it, well, you can turn it way up and it looks amazing. All right, I got to build a whole city here. This this game is brutal. I hope you like brutal city builders. All right, let's take a look at Valley. First off, we'll look at the Ryzen 7 6850H. See the FPS 64.3, 2692 is our score. And then we just got a couple extra FPS when we switch over to the Ryzen 9 Pro 6950H score. 2768, FPS 66.1. Very similar performance there. Let's give superposition a go. I'm going to do 1080p medium on both. This taxes the CPU and the GPU because it's got a lot of physics and stuff. Unigen makes some great benchmarks, so let's go ahead and try this out on both of them. All right, the results for superposition with the Ryzen 7 score 4551. Minimum 28.88, average 34.04. Take a look at that. Now I'm going to switch over to the other one, and not much is going to change. Look at the minimum and the average. 29.96 on the Ryzen 9 for the minimum, and 28.88. So about 1 FPS difference right there, and 2 FPS difference on the average. So the Ryzen 9 is 2 FPS faster with superposition. Score 48.30. All right, now we're going to run Crystal Disk Mark to check the drive speed, and then we also have hardware info open over here so we can see the smart information and check the drive temperatures as we're running these tests. All right, let's test out some real games and see how it runs with Cyberpunk 2077. I'm gonna test it on high, medium, and low. We'll start off on the low setting. This is how it looks on low. It looks really good on low in my opinion. So there's our FPS. You're currently watching the Ryzen 7. Over here we've got the Ryzen 9. The Ryzen 7, this you know integrated GPU 780M is really fast, 43.52 FPS. Now, I want you to look at this. So this is, remember, this is the Ryzen, Ryzen 7. This is the Ryzen 9. The Ryzen 7 is faster than the Ryzen 9. Let me just make sure everything's the same. Fidelity is turned on, set to auto. SR 2.1 is at 0.5. I mean, everything is the same. So yeah, this is interesting. Let's see what happens in the other tests. See if we aren't gonna do any bottlenecks when we get into the high and medium. But yeah, right now, this is great. All right, so on medium, we've got 36.52 here with the Ryzen 7, and the Ryzen 9 is giving us 38.87, so just a little more than two FPS uh, extra right there. It seems to be like, that seems to be the story, it's two, F, two FPS. Let's try high and see what we get. It's probably not gonna be something I wanna play on high because both of them are, yeah, this is 28.59 on the minimum, so I don't wanna play it on the Ryzen 7 on medium, and then 30. So yeah, the, the low right there, I don't like it when it gets down to 30, but 
Alright, let's try high just for the hell of it. So what's the story with high? Well, it's the same as always. You've got 28.26 with a minimum of 23.70. Not going to play it like this with the Ryzen 7. Not going to play it like this with the Ryzen 9 either, but as you can see, it's about the same difference. 31.08, just a few frames per second, two to three frames per second faster. Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9. Let's try out Baldur's Gate. So I'm running this on low and I've got FSR 2.2 and I've got that set to balanced. So it doesn't look amazing on low, but we're getting good frame rate. And that's what matters because this game is the best game of the decade easily. Let's try medium and just see how it is. Maybe you want it to look a little better than that. All right, here's medium. Uh, medium looks a little bit better. Now it's gonna be dependent upon you. Are you okay with mid thirties? Except when I look over here, look, it's gonna, oh, well, it's not terrible. Well, yeah, it's not bad. Okay, yeah, you can play this on medium, I think because it's turn-based. This is not like a super high speed action game or anything like that. How do they look? Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, let's take a look at the Ryzen 7. And we are getting pretty good performance as well. This is on low with the FSR 2.2 on the balanced mode. You first look out here, it chops a little. No, you can, you can play this. You can totally play this just fine. Let's try medium and just see how that runs. All right, medium, we are in the 40s which in my opinion is totally fine. I just don't want it to be like in the mid twenties or something like that, but yeah, this is totally fine because this is a turn-based game. And I kind of want, I kind of want it to be pretty. Let's get him to come over here. And we'll take a look and just see how good it looks. But yeah, this is completely playable and looks still looks very good to me. Let's try. All right, let's take a look at Cinebench. This is the Ryzen 7 6850H. Single core score, 1452. Take a look at the Ryzen 9. Our single core score improves a, a little bit. It's almost the same, 1477. That's kind of a wash. It's basically the same score. So yeah, they're very, very similar CPUs. So of course, they're going to have very similar scores. All right, back over to the Ryzen 7. Let's take a look at the multi-core score, where I hope to see a bigger difference in the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9. So the Ryzen 7, we have 11965. And on the Ryzen 9, our multi-core score is 12,927. Again, very similar performance. All right, let's have a look at our Geekbench score. So the Ryzen 7, 2105 on the single core and 9789 on the multi-core. And then if we switch over and look at the Ryzen 9, 2177 and 10,370 on the multi-core. So again, I'll switch back and forth so you can see the difference. A little bit of an upgrade. And then let's scroll down here. This is the Ryzen 7. Scroll down so you can see the individual tests, in case you're curious about any of those. And now the same on the Ryzen 9. We'll scroll down so you can see all of these individual tests. If something pertains to you, by all means, pause and take a look. All right, let's take a look at our OpenCL score right here with the Ryzen 7, 29154. And with the Ryzen 9, 31121. So again, pretty similar scores. Scroll down, Ryzen 7. See what we got down here. There's all of our scores. And again on the Ryzen 9, there's all of our scores. So we have a Lexar branded SSD here in the Ryzen 7. Over here we have a Zeta Stone branded SSD in the Ryzen 9. Temperatures look really good. These do come with some nice heat spreaders pre-installed on the M.2. So that's nice to see. Now here's the point in the test when it gets the hottest. So we're seeing 44 or so right now during the write tests. And that's on the Ryzen 7, the Ryzen 9. We are seeing 41, so it's running a little bit cooler and a little bit faster. So we got 45 degrees. This is still very cool. Like, I don't usually worry until it gets closer to 80, but we are just chilling at 45 during the stressful write test. But then again, you know, this is only doing 25, 13. We've seen some that are like five, 6,000. So the uh, M.2 speed on the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9 is very similar. First off on the Ryzen 7, we can see that our maximum read was 3553.51. And then over here it's 3541, so that's pretty much the same. But the write speed, the maximum write speed was a little bit faster over here on the Ryzen 9, 3131 versus 2653. So the Ryzen 9 does have a slightly faster M.2 and you'll notice that with the reads. And also it runs a little bit cooler. If you can see right here, we maxed out around 41, whereas over here we maxed out at about 45. So still both of them are very cool and pretty 
decent performance for middling like PCI Express 4. All right, let's do a little bit of an audio test while this benchmark is running or while this test is running. About 45 at my desk. Let's see what they are by each unit. We'll start off with the M7 with the 6850. All right, the M7 is running right at 50 decibels. And it's really interesting because it's a constant noise. Reading out as being louder than some. I tested one yesterday that was 49 and it had a much more annoying sound. These, the fans ramp up and they stay at a curtain, at like a certain volume and just kind of like even out. So it's like a so you can hear it, but it's not like ramping up and down, so it doesn't bother me as much. But yeah, it's 50 decibels. Raise the decibel level in the room a little bit. Now let's test the M7 Pro and see how different that one is. All right, both of the units are pretty much identical. I mean, a lot of the parts on the inside are about the same. So yeah, 50.3. I mean, I think I saw 51, but I also saw the other one peak around 51 as well. I just didn't hit the hold button at the right time. So yeah, let's see how hot we're running. Start off right here with the M7 with the 6850. This is the Ryzen 7, and this one is running at a cool 37 degrees. Wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. No, that is not getting the correct readings. So if we click over here on hardware info, we should find the correct readings. Where are my readings, Mr. Data? So yeah, it looks like we have peaked out at 86.2. This is a little bit warm. I mean, we're still under the T-junction max, so nothing to like scream and yell about. But yeah, it's, it's warm. I mean, it's a warm CPU. Nothing to freak out about. All right, let's see how the Ryzen 9 is doing. All right, Ryzen 9, 6950H. And that one looks like we're around 83 right now after 20 minutes. But let's just see what hardware info tells us over here. All right, so this one's running a little bit cooler. So that is interesting. We have a more powerful CPU, same TDP, and it's running like a couple of degrees colder. Not much. Like when we compare them, less than two degrees difference. Very slight edge and coolness to the Ryzen 9 Pro. So seriously, is it worth it to get a Ryzen 9? Well, maybe if you need that little bit of extra speed, yeah. If they're about the same price, sure, why not? The Ryzen 9 is awesome. But if you just need cores and you're doing like, you know, like virtual machines and stuff, you probably won't notice any difference whatsoever. If you're just doing office stuff, if you're doing video editing, if you're doing 3D work, if you're making games or whatever, if you're doing some kind of productivity, you probably won't notice any difference whatsoever. It's gonna feel like the same CPU. The only time you're really going to notice much of a difference is if you're doing some stuff with OpenCL, but it's only going to be a little bit. And then maybe you'll get a couple extra F F and you'll get a couple extra FPS when you're playing games. So really, it's kind of difficult to recommend the Ryzen 9 when I know how fast the Ryzen 7 is. And, you know, like, let's just let's just say like we got. And if you take a look at the prices right now on sale, they're both the same the Ryzen 9 with 32 and one terabyte and this one let's see if it's a little cheaper if we go down to 16. now this one doesn't even have an option for that it's just got so yeah can we even do that much no right here if we're doing 32 and one terabyte they're the same price they're like the same cpu so i would get the ryzen 9 at this price and so the same price if they're on sale because that's a really good deal but if not i don't know they're both really fast and, you know, Jim K Tech made a really, really solid PC, but it's like, why do we have to have two of the same? They're all like the same CPU AMD. Why? Just, just give us one. I know we need different things so people can go, Ryzen 9, I'll play an extra hundred dollars for them because it's a bigger number. What voice was that? But that's, you know, that's some people and AMD likes those people. But people watching this, you're educated. You know, you can get whichever one meets your needs and also meets your budget and if they're about the same price get the nine if they're if the seven's much cheaper then you can be just fine with the seven so yeah let me know what you think about that let's head over to epicpants.com and get yourself some stuff to make you not naked from at least the top half i never care about the bottom half that's not the important half anyway right i just cover up the top half and the police hate me it's because i always rub the bottom half of my body and salve and then they always get all sticky trying to catch me and i slip right through their grasp every single time come at me portman this is what we're doing so yeah head on over here got some deals epicpants.com uh, i'll see you on the comments they both come with windows 11 fro fro i don't even want to know what version that is all right so is it worth it to get a ryzen 7 so is it worth it <laughs>